right, now, okay, I get the point. I mean, there's nothing to play. I got. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go back to film. Film t- ties in because film is a record. So if you're a documentary, make documentaries that tell the truth about what happened. This is the most important thing. And as feature films, you should make feature films that reflect the situation, I hope. But make them, because you have to make a little commercial. You can make them exciting. Tension, keep the tension, be aware of it. Don't make it boring. And now your questions, please. Do you believe that cinema should serve politics or politics should serve cinema? I am not a politician, I am not an activist. I don't go out there and uh, lobby. What I do most of the time is I'm a dramatist. You know what the word means? Dramatist. Dramatist. It's an important word. The Greeks understood this word. So it's very important. But you see, the dramatist can also tell history in a way that sometimes the historians can miss because the historians, every historian has to omit and, and put the facts the way he would like them to be. He edits the story. Great historians tell a great story. Great dramatists tell a great story. I took that story and I twisted it around and I made people think about it another way. That's great drama. It's nothing to do with politics. It's great drama. Make people think, rethink the narrative. The narrative of the American century. I tried to make Americans rethink it in the untold history of the United States. We have been lying to ourselves for a long time. More than a hundred years of bullshit. We grew up with bullshit in schools. And I'm trying to tell another story. It's very hard to go against. But one day, maybe they will remember my JFK instead of their, their JFK. We hope. These films are not available in Iran. That's a problem, but you can see them somewhere, I'm sure. We should be, what? okay, what? This guy's like a fucking editor. <laughs> I love my I love America. I love the people. I love what it stands for. The freedom, supposed freedom, and the democracy. I love that. I love the chances, the chance it gives people, a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Very rarely in the world, because of all the class problems, do we have that kind of social mobility. There is much in the landscape, and the, uh, the freedom of expression, the humor, the arts. There's much in the United States I love. But there has been a problem, and this is our militarization. The budgets that we spend on military hardware alone, which we sell to other countries, including Iraq and all the other third world countries, second world countries, we sell that stuff. This is important because it involves all of us. And our nuclear, our nuclear terror that exists is so-called this, what do you call it, this nuclear terror is what I would call it, hangs over all mankind. It matters to all of us. Because if these things go off in any amount, there will be a nuclear winter and the rest of Earth will be wiped out. So it's not an American problem, it's a universal problem. And I think as a man who loves peace, who has seen war, and many of you have, you must love peace and you must make it happen but we cannot make it just lie there and let it happen because we have to realize there are people who are constantly violating it. Very important. Please, please pay attention. And you guys talk about Obama and Trump and this. It's not a big difference. There's no difference. Please see the big picture. The neoconservatives are in power in the United States. That's the issue. And that's what you're missing the point. These three presidents, including Obama, and I said this yesterday, are part of that plan. Obama may be more humanitarian, he speaks better, he's a, a Democrat or whatever, he's colored, but he's still part of that empire. Nothing has changed. The strategy doesn't change. To deal with corruption, and we saw corruption at every level of, the, uh, of uh, Iranian society, lower class, even middle, lower, and middle class. Everybody was corrupt. The story starts with this nice young man who is a municipal, a, a police officer, is that correct? Yeah, who has to, who is in the middle, lives in the middle of the corruption and how he has to get on with his life. And his story goes to another person, to another person, to another person, to another person. It's a beautiful, like a bicycle thief. It becomes a, a vivid portrait of a society 
dealing with all the problems we, we know, we recognize throughout the world, throughout the world, China, Philippines, even the United States, Russia, corruption. If Iran doesn't remember it's what happened under the Shah, you're fucked. There's no way. It's like, you understand what I'm saying? It's very crucial for history to continue and to be told properly with the truth. Let me just say quickly that my time here in Iran has been spent very well. I think my wife and I have seen a lot from uh, starting in Ishfahan, Kershan, which is amazing, and then yeah, it's quite the people of Tehran have been very kind and very warm-hearted. Jesus, by the time you finish, I'm, I, well, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> We should be. What? Okay, what? This guy's like a fucking editor. <laughs> <laughs>